What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about monumental change coming in the online streaming service. Disney is set to launch Disney Plus in just a couple months, its own direct-to-consumer online video service to compete head-on with Netflix and Amazon Prime. This is going to be a game changer in the entire media landscape. And I think, you know, a lot of people are curious about what's going to happen to Netflix, what's going to happen to Disney stock, how is this going to change the financials of these companies? So in this episode, I want to break down, you know, what's happening and my thoughts on this because I actually actually am extremely bullish on Disney and you know I usually don't like large cap tech stocks old companies Disney is a super old school company but I actually think Bob Iger is one of the best CEOs in the world and I think they're positioned potentially through a huge wrench in what Netflix is doing and become a dominant player in the future of online content and digital content so um, Disney Plus is the streaming service that Disney's been working on for years it's literally a carbon copy of Netflix available on as many online digital platforms as they can get it on it's streaming and so now Disney has been in this multi year long process of pulling its content from Netflix and other streaming services to build up a library of content for its new service called Disney Plus. But it's not just Disney Plus. Uh, Disney is, is, you know, reinventing a bunch of different aspects of their business to go direct to consumer. So they're actually going to have three streaming services. They're going to have Disney Plus, which is their main, you know, Disney branded content. They're going to have things like Star Wars. We're going to talk about that in a second. Then they have ESPN Plus, which is sports content, a different streaming service by ESPN, uh, which costs about $4.99 a month. And then they also own 60% of Hulu, which is the streaming service you're all familiar of. I bet they're going to acquire, you know, the rest of that outright. And so Disney is going to have this sort of three-pronged approach to online content, uh, Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. And so Disney Plus is the biggest one, and that is launching on November 12th. So that is right around the corner. It's launching in the U.S. and Canada, and I think somewhere else um, on November 12th, and they're going to roll out to more and more countries. So the real question is, how many people are going to sign up for this? How big of a deal is this going to be? Is it going to get people to cancel their Netflix? Netflix contract. Well, I think the best way to look at this is, you know, content is king in this new era. And Disney, as much as you th- think of them as an old school media TV company, their true business is content. They are a content creation company. And that is why I think the opportunity for them is so g- big. And almost the internet is an innovation that al- enables the true, you know, ultimate form of Disney's uh, company. Because what Disney really wants to do is create a connection with consumers. The more direct and easier and faster and simpler way that they can get their content to you without a middleman is a bigger opportunity for them to capture more revenue. And that is at its core what is happening is Disney is going from no longer relying on TV stations, on cable networks, on movie theaters, on all this other stuff to get you content, on relying on Netflix to get you content. They're going direct to consumer. And I think in the long run, that means they're cutting out a middleman and will actually increase the scope and opportunity for Disney. And think about it. More people are watching content than ever. Sure, it's really crowded with competition, but more people are are spending time on their screens than ever before. And that's an increasing tailwind that's going to go on for years and years and years. We literally literally have billions of consumers connected online that are ready to sign up and watch content. And that is the addressable market of Disney. And they have been in the content business for a hundred years and crushing it with so much IP um, that they are ready to turn into new material to get people hooked. And the best example of that is what Disney is doing with Star Wars. They're creating a totally new Star Wars TV show. They have put in uh, a first season that's going to launch when Disney Plus launches on November 12th. It's called The Mandolin. Uh, Mandalorian, um, and it's cost like a hundred million dollars, huge budget, uh, produced by John Favreau, created by him. You know, it. I, I think this is going to be taking over pop culture. It's going to take over the media. It's going to be the driving advertising force that is going to make a huge splash for Disney Plus off the bat, get them a ton of subscribers. If this is the it new show, if this is the Game of the Thrones, if this is the Game of Thrones of that moment, you know, this could literally mean like potentially a huge blow to Netflix overnight. But even more importantly than that overnight success for Disney Plus as a streaming service. Just to put things in context, Star Wars has 4.1 million followers on Twitter. Star Wars Instagram page has 11 million followers. Star Wars is a franchise with millions and millions of people that could sign up just to watch this TV show. And so when you think about it like that, Disney Plus getting millions of subscribers off the bat is not hard with this original Star Wars content. And that is just a microcosm of what Disney is getting set to do with their content library. They're just going to keep pumping out more and more content um, from all these characters and sort of like this creative idea house that they have. And so I think there's, you know, a huge, huge potential for this to really transform Disney's business. And what's so, so fascinating is they are going right for the throat of Netflix. They're making this cheap. They want to make it more affordable than Netflix, a better deal. And, 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 Honestly, I was kind of blown away by this offering, which is they're bundling in Hulu, 
Disney Plus and ESPN Plus for $12.99 when they launch. I mean, that is cheaper than Netflix or on par with Netflix here in the US. And you're going to get three streaming services. Netflix doesn't have any sports. You get sports. You get a ton of shows with Hulu. You get all the new Disney Plus stuff. You get a ton of old Disney content on the Disney Plus platform. I mean, the only thing I think of that they wouldn't have covered maybe would be stand up, but maybe Hulu uh, starts getting into stand up or Disney does somehow and they, you know, add that to their library as well. But I mean, this is going to be a full fledged offering that is going to be able to compete head on with Netflix. And, you know, I don't know, you, there's only so much time in a day that you can spend watching TV. You know, right now the pendulum has swung so far to Netflix. Netflix gets so much of that viewing percentage, so many hours of that. Um, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, there's so many shows you can watch on Netflix. There's going to be so many shows you can watch on Disney. Like how many of these streaming services are you going to need? How many are you really going to watch? Like maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, but with Amazon, which you get for free for prime, do you really need Netflix? If you get Disney plus probably not, honestly. So I don't know. I think this is a really, really fascinating thing to play out. And usually these tech companies who disrupt industries and are first movers have huge advantages that will last that outcompete the incumbents. But here, Netflix has invented the distribution model, but that's the easy part. Building a streaming service is way, way easier than building an original content house. And that's why network, uh, and that's why Netflix has been reinventing itself backwards to try and become Disney and start pumping out original content because content is king and that is the future and that is the moat. And Disney, I think, has the best content and so they may have the best moat and they may have the best product and that may get them the most subscribers and I mean just to crunch a couple numbers if they do you know a million people signing up at $12.99 a month for 12 months that's $155 million in high margin streaming revenue if they get 4 million of those Star Wars fans to subscribe uh, that's you know 600 700 million in revenue just from that so I think I can see Disney service ramping up to millions of subscribers right after launch tens of millions within six months to a year after launch becoming a huge success for the company Really quickly, I just wanted to go into hyper charts for Disney just to show you guys the financials of this company because, you know, large market cap, 250 billion market cap almost at, at this price. The stock has actually been doing very well because I think people are realizing how much potential this has. As you can see, it sort of had that big breakout um, around 120 and then it's been going up, hit 140, but now back down to 137. But anyway, to the financials of Disney. So $250 billion company, we're looking at, you know, a very diversified revenue stream. You can see media networks is cable revenue here in the blue. Then we have the red, which is the park business and I think this business is going to be very good and, and and gets very very underrated I think you know as VR gets better as uh, you know Disney builds up more and more content and they have the streaming service and they inspire people and they love their shows they're gonna have more and more opportunities to create real life experiences to go along with them and that's the parks business and I'm very bullish on where this is going and as you can see it's it's been growing consistently throughout the years and so this is the breakdown of Disney's revenue if we go to the overall just revenue and operating income chart you can see they did acquire 21st Century Fox that's why they have the big jump in revenue there but you can see this is an extremely profitable company and they're making you know about three billion dollars in operating income a quarter you annualize that that's about 12 billion dollars in operating income run rate you know 250 billion divided by 12 billion we're looking at about 20 21 times price ebit ratio uh, you know so i think this is a very very attractive moment for disney stock you know i usually don't like big tech companies i don't own disney stock but if there is a big tech company who's old that i've been super surprised by that i'm very bullish on it's got to be disney i think this is cheap you're buying the current business which is going to suffer some weakness as you know the cable business dies as maybe the movie theater business struggles but i think the growth in streaming and the market getting excited about how successful that's going to be and how that could drive parks revenue and merch revenue and all this other stuff i think that narrative is going to take over once disney Disney Plus launches. I think this is going to get repriced as a growth company potentially, and that could mean a much higher EBIT multiple than the 20x we're seeing, especially if you start to figure that, you know, the streaming service could actually accelerate earnings growth. So very, very bullish on Disney. Um, I think, you know, the jury's out on how much this will affect Netflix. That's really the big question mark in my head. Uh, you know, I personally don't have Netflix. I use my friend's account. I don't know if I'll sign up for Disney Plus. I'll probably use my friend's account as well for that too. But, um, but I think, you know, Netflix is at this rubber meets the road moment where they find finally have a real competitor. They finally have someone with the capital and the content to go right for them. That's not Amazon. And this is going to be a real test of their business model and moat. So I'll be following it here on HyperChange. Would love to know what you think in the comments below. Are you going to sign up for Disney Plus? Are you going to cancel Netflix? Let me know. Anyway, this is HyperChange. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers, fun in the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.